Well, the sentiment really is the, the sorrow for the pathetic shape the business is in. And, you know, between streaming and the pandemic, it was like a stake through the heart of the, you know, I mean, it really hurt the biz and it continues to do so. And the strike now, the streamers really are the bad guys. And it's, it, it's interesting, the strikes. Um, do you know, it's the first time in Hollywood history that the Directors Guild, the Writers Guild, the Actors Guild, and the IA are all united. So, you know, and it's never been, do you know, it's always been called the business, the movie business. It's never even been called the craft. It's been called the business, the industry, you know. It's a miracle that so many good movies were made here in Hollywood. No, it's just a difficult time. It is, it is the film industry's in chaos. And, uh, I hope that the audience comes back to the theaters. And some of it's the theater's fault. I mean, you know, they got, you know, you go buy candy bar for 30 bucks. You know, it's like, what? You know, they gouge and they, but when a theater, you know, the truth is motion pictures are meant to be seen in a large house cinema, a big theater on a big screen with good sound and as many people as possible because it's a communal experience. When you watch a movie on your laptop or you watch it on TV in your house, it's a totally different experience than if you watch it in a theater. Um, not only just the visceral impact of it, but the enjoyment of it and the appreciation of it. I mean, can you imagine? I think there's, a gener there's generations now that have Experience Lawrence of Arabia this big. <laughs> you know? it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. And the truth is, as a filmmaker, emotions are contagious. So if you go see a comedy, the more people in the theater, the funnier it is, truly. And if you see a scary movie, the more people in the theater, the more frightening it is. Fear is contagious, just like laughter. By the way, that's not limited to horror and comedy. That's true of any genre. A romance is much more romantic with a crowd. Well, there's two reasons why the horror films are always going to do well. One is teenagers have to have somewhere to go. <laughs> you know, you want to take a girl out. You don't want to stay home. And two, to experience that visceral excitement of a scary movie and huddle together. You know, I mean, it's, it's like there have been so many explanations why people go to horror films. And all of them are true and none of them are true. You know, it's, uh, some people say it's, you can experience death without experience, with no danger. Very much like a roller coaster. You know, you can experience speed and thrills with no danger. Um, but, I don't know, it's just, it, it really is, there is, if you ask people their favorite movie or what was their best movie going experience, almost always they'll tell you the date, what theater it was, and who they were with. Because it's, it's a big thing. I mean, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, there's live theater, of course, which is wonderful, but this is something really special. What I'm working on now, I'm involved in a Broadway show mm -hmm. that will take a long time, but that's kind of exciting. What's that? I can't tell you. And I'm involved in two features in a television series. But you know, the truth in the movie business is, I think, well, what am I saying? The truth in life is nothing is real until it's real. So, but I, I always have stuff that I want to do. I'm very lucky. I, I'm well aware of how lucky I am. I don't have to work. I've had great success in the past, but I'm desperate to work. I love making movies. It's a great joy for me. I love everything about it. I love showing, it's like circus. Showing up in the morning where, you know, eating breakfast off the truck. 
um, standing around in your park. I mean, it really is a pleasure. And I've shot in many countries, all over the U.S. and Canada, and uh, it's usually fun. The writers and I, um, Harold Ramis, Doug Kenny, and Chris Miller, we really did kind of sabotage any sort of sequel to Animal House. And as it was, <laughs> there were so many Animal House knockoffs that, uh, you know, it, uh, I and mean, they still make them. They're still making Animal House knockoffs. It's kind of extraordinary. I don't know, you know, I'm very curious to see the new, uh, I forgot the title, um, Jennifer Lawrence's new comedy. It's a, because it's a, what's called a hard R. It's a sex comedy. And I'm very curious, I hope that does well. First of all, I'm a big fan of hers, but I mean, I would like a hard R comedy to do well. And what's strange is, you know, I made the Blues Brothers. There is nothing in the Blues Brothers I would not let an eight-year-old see. But it's an R-rated film because they swear. But there's no nudity, there's no blood, there's no, you know. Pearl clutching, I mean, Jesus, we have, I mean, the Republican Party has become, what's her name, Bobart and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene? How did she find out about my satellites? That's what I want to know. But I mean, you know, these people are insane. They're not just right wing. They're they're lunatics. They're they're fascists. They're like Donald Duck cartoons, you know. And uh, that's really scary. Okay, take Animal House. I have had literally. It's been a long time. So I've had literally thousands of men approach me and say. That was based on my fraternity, wasn't it? At whatever university. Of all stripes. I mean, just the most, like, really, Senator Dirksen? You, what? Everett Dirksen said, it was based on my fraternity. I went, what? Uh, you know, I mean, but how do you talk about satire? How do you satirize Ted Cruz? How do you satirize that guy? Trump said, your wife's ugly and your dad killed Kennedy. You're a genius, Mr. Trump. You know, it's like, what? Uh, you know, I, uh, it's very, honestly, I think comedy is comedy. If it's funny, it's funny. And this political sensitivity is very frightening. We have a Supreme Court that's out of control. You know, it's, it's very strange times. And I think it's ripe for all kinds of comedy. How do you, what's that guy, who's our senator, who's, pathological liar. Santos. Santos. Yeah, Santos. How do you make fun of him? Honestly. I mean, hello? Could you? And then how do you have the Republican Party defend him and say, okay, he's a liar and a crook and a thief, but he's our liar and crook and thief. I mean, it's like, what? Well, no, you can't. Here's the problem. When you have someone like Boris Johnson, and you have, I live in London a lot too, and I've made many films there. And I remember when Brexit was happening, thinking, you really gonna vote for, do you understand what, and you live there? Have you noticed? They don't talk about it. Nope. That the Tories, even the, the, the uh, Labor. Labor Party, because what's his name, what's his guy, I forgot his name. Here's no, the, 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 the no, 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 the the labor guy. Oh, during, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn. He was for Brexit. Hello, I mean that was such a car accident. 
It was such a, there's, Chuck Jones was an American director, animation director, who was brilliant. And have you ever been in a car accident? Lucky. Have you ever been in a car accident? No. Never? A fender bender? Like, you've never done that? Oh, well, there, anyone who's been in a car accident will recall there's a moment, no matter what's happening, where you're going, eh, it hurts, you know, of total clarity. It's a moment where you go, oh, I'm going to hit that wall. And then, boom, you know, there's this moment when you go, holy shit, that truck, you know, it really is there. And he isolated it and illustrated it brilliantly in the Roadrunner cartoons. When the coyote chasing the Roadrunner would run off the end of the cliff, and he'd always be there suspended and look at the audience, look at us, going, I am so fucked, <laughs> before he falls. Okay, we gotta wrap because we have to get a quick portrait before And that's, I said, that's exactly how I felt during Brexit. I, <laughs> I thought, are they crazy? Yes, and now, and now, and now. And now.